Before we talk about pneumococcal vaccine, it's important to distinguish between pneumococcal disease and meningococcal disease. When we say meningococcal disease, we are talking about meningococcal meningitis specifically, and this is caused by the organism Neisseria meningitidis, which is a gram-negative caucus. Now, there are 12 zero groups, so you will see this in the uh, meningococcal vaccine, and there are different vaccines. Uh, for example, the men ACWY has four uh, zero groups here, whereas men B only has the B. Now, when we talk about pneumococcal disease, there are two diseases that may, this may be referring to. So pneumococcal meningitis and also pneumococcal pneumonia. And this is uh, basically caused by streptococcus pneumoniae, which is a gram-positive caucus. And there are 91 different serotypes. Now, we have two different pneumococcal vaccines. We have the Pneumovax 23 and we have Prevnar 13, which I will explain shortly. Now, it's important to distinguish between these two because there is some misconception out there. When we talk about meningococcal disease, people may refer uh, to this as uh, menin uh, meningitis uh, vaccine. So it is true that by taking meningococcal vaccine, you will uh, basically prevent meningitis due to Neisseria meningitidis. And people may refer to pneumococcal vaccine as pneumonia vaccine. This is where the misconception comes in because streptococcus pneumonia can cause pneumonia, but it can also cause meningitis. So by giving patients pneumococcal vaccine, not only are we trying to prevent pneumonia, but also we are trying to prevent meningitis. In fact, streptococcus pneumonia can cause several systemic infections, including non-bacteremic, such as uh, pneumonia, and it can also cause bacteremia, which can uh, also lead to meningitis. So meningitis, you can see a smaller portion of these cases are meningitis, but the uh, fatality rate is much higher in meningitis compared to other diseases called, uh, caused by streptococcus pneumonia. So really, in order to prevent meningitis, you need two vaccines. You need meningococcal vaccine and you need pneumococcal vaccine. There are currently four different pneumococcal vaccine products on the market in the United States. The first one is Pneumovax 23, which is a 23 valent uh, pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine. And what that means is that it includes 23 serotypes of streptococcus pneumoniae in this vaccine. It is approved for ages two years and older, and it is available as a one dose vial. So need uh, this needs to be drawn into a syringe, can be administered as an intramuscular or a subcutaneous injection, and all of these products must be stored in a refrigerator. Uh, and then, so this is PPSV, the rest of them are PCV, or uh, polysaccharide conjugate uh, vaccine. And the first one is Prevnar 13, so this is a 13 valent, and it has 13 of those serotypes. Uh, this is approved for ages six weeks of age and older. And all of these PCVs are available as a pre-filled syringe, so they can only be given as an intramuscular injection. Uh, most recently, we had uh, Vaxnuvens and Prevnar 20 approved. So Vaxnuvens is a 15-valent uh, PCV, and Prevnar 20, as the name suggests, is a 20-valent uh, PCV. Uh, of note, uh, when both of these came to the market, they were initially approved for eight, uh, ages 18 years or older. Most recently, uh, Vaxnuvens got approval for ages 6 weeks and older. And I anticipate in the next few months, uh, Prevnar 20 will also get approval from the FDA for 6 weeks of age and older. But currently, it's only available for adults 18 years or older. Let's take a look at differences between the two main different types of pneumococcal vaccines, pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine and pneumococcal conjugate vaccine. There are different modalities of vaccines. So polysaccharide vaccines are processed as non-T lymphocyte dependent uh, immunogens, uh, but not immunogenic in children younger than two years of age. So that um, be, uh, makes it a problem. So that's why uh, pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine is only available for uh, ages two years and older. It's just ineffective for anyone under the age of two. Protein vaccines, on the other hand, are processed by T lymphocytes and even in neonates induce antibodies. 
because these vaccines uh, essentially use the polysaccharides on the capsule of uh, pneumococcal um, or uh, streptococcus pneumoniae, one strategy is uh, to link these polysaccharides to a protein carrier, which can be processed by T lymphocytes, and this results in a more long-lasting protective antibody response, even in the very young age, under the age of two. So that's essentially what we have done with uh, pneumococcal conjugate vaccine. So, uh, and because in general proteins are larger than polysaccharides, there are fewer of these serotypes that were able to fit into the vaccine. So, you know, uh, the polysaccharide, because poly these are all pure polysaccharides, there are 23 different serotypes in here. With PCV13, uh, you know, proteins, uh, each one of these serotypes is linked to a protein. So only 13 of them could fit. Uh, but this is a much better vaccine because of higher immunogenicity uh, in general, but also in young age under the age of two. So from six weeks to age two, this will be very effective. So let's compare the efficacy. So for the pneumococcal polysaccharide uh, vaccine is essentially effective in preventing invasive uh, pneumococcal infection. So when we say invasive, uh, you know, uh, think of meningitis. So essentially infection in, in the brain. And uh, unfortunately, it does not seem to be effective in preventing pneumonia. So none of the studies that uh, evaluated uh, Polysaccharide has not shown efficacy for preventing pneumonia. Whereas uh, PCV, it is very effective in reducing invasive infections like meningitis, but also it has been shown to be effective in preventing non-invasive infections such as pneumonia. So historically, uh, people had to get both of these vaccines, uh, you know, uh, PCV13 first because it's very effective, and then uh, Pneumo, uh, Pneumovax 23 to supplement all those serotypes that are not included in PCV13. However, as technology has advanced, we have been able to include more serotypes in the vaccine. So with the uh, uh, PCV15, which came to the market in, uh, actually both of them came to the market in 2021, uh, you know, we have been able to include more serotypes in the PCV vaccines. So PCV15 has 15 uh, serotypes. And what they have shown is that they have shown non-inferiority when it comes to immunogenicity to uh, PCV13. So all of these uh, 13 uh, serotypes in PCV13 are included in PCV15. And it has two additional um, serotypes. So of course, it has been shown to be superior to PCV13 uh, for those two unique serotypes. But also, it uh, you know interestingly, had better response for serotype 3, which is also included in PCV13. So PCV15, immunogenically, uh, pretty good vaccine. Uh, now these are new, so we don't have clinical data. So is it more effective as far as preventing non-invasive and invasive pneumococcal vaccine? We just don't know uh, yet. Now the same can be said about PCV20. So it has all the 13 uh, serotypes from PCV13 and it has seven new serotypes in it and it has been shown to be non-inferior to PCV13 with the 13 that are shared and also PCV20 is targeting more of those serotypes in PPSV23 in the hopes of eliminating the need for getting PPSV23 and it has been shown to be non-inferior to those seven serotypes that are also included in PPSV23. So here are the recommendations for receiving the pneumococcal vaccination. So in general, we can think of healthy uh, persons with no risk factors for uh, you know, getting uh, pneumococcal disease. And then of course, those who have risk factors and we'll go over what those risk factors are. So in general, for healthy individual, no risk factor, and this is in individuals who have not received pneumococcal vaccines uh, before, uh, you know, because pneumococcal vaccine is also part of childhood immunization nowadays, but a lot of adults, uh, you know, uh, these childhood immunization was not available at the time they were children. So, you know, uh, for the large, uh, for the large part, uh, the population has not received childhood immunization for pneumococcal. But, you know, as time goes on, more and more uh, children who receive their childhood immunization go on to be adults. So these recommendations change uh, in time. So for those who are 
pneumococcal vaccine naive and are healthy with no risk factors essentially prior to age 65 it's not recommended for them to receive pneumococcal vaccine because they are not at risk of being exposed to uh, streptococcus pneumoniae and uh, develop uh, severe disease however once uh, individuals turn 65 they are at risk of developing pneumonia and meningitis and other infections due to uh, streptococcus pneumonia so it is recommended for people age 65 to receive one dose of PCV20 or if they want they can get one dose of PCV15 instead so it doesn't matter which one they get so both of these are uh, now uh, recommended for these individuals now however because there is a gap between PCV15 and 20 it is recommended that if somebody chooses to get PCV15 they should also get a dose of PPC uh, PPSV23 at least one year later. So it's important to know that PCV and PPSV vaccines cannot and should not be administered uh, at the same time. There should be a large uh, time gap between them and that is recommended to be at least one year. Uh, so here's what the timing looks like. So obviously if somebody gets PCV20, uh, they're done. There, there is no need for them to get PPSV23. Uh, because you know most of S PPSV23 is covered here and PCV in general is a better vaccine than PPSV uh, however if somebody gets PCV15 they will just have to wait one year and then get one dose of PPSV23 and they are done now what if uh, somebody had already received the PPSV23 and they have not received their PCV yet so for those individuals, uh, again, it's re recommended that as long as it's been at least one year after their PPSV23, then they can get either PCV15 or PCV20. It doesn't matter which one they get. They can get PCV20 if they want, and then they're done. So after this, there is no need for another PPSV23. Now, vaccine, uh, vaccine doses do not need to be repeated if they are given prior to age 65. So for whatever reason, if somebody received these vaccines prior to age 65, there's no need for them to be repeated after 65. And when PCV15 is used in those with hist uh, history of PPSV23, uh, it did not be followed by another PPSV23. And lastly, for adults who have received uh, PCV13, which is still on the market, uh, but not completed the recommended uh, pneumococcal vaccine series with PPSV23, uh, they do have the choice to get the PCV20 uh, if PPSV23 is not available. Now, let's take a look at those with risk factors. So the risk factors, I have broken uh, them into three categories. So the first category is uh, immuno they are immunocompetent. Uh, these are just comorbidities. And then the second group are still immunocompetent, but uh, you know they have some conditions that uh, could expose them to streptococcus pneumonia entering the brain and develop meningitis. So this is relatively higher risk than the first group. And then the last is immunocompromising conditions. So you know things like asplenia, cancer, HIV, uh, transplant, and other things on the list. So for any of these groups the recommendation is the same. So essentially, uh, you know, this is, you know, because these are high risk, we're not going to wait till they are 65. So as you know, between the age of 19 to 64, and this is assuming that, you know, they have not received childhood uh, PCV vaccination, uh, you know, assuming uh, childhood immunization was either not available for these individuals or it was available and they chose not to get them. So bef between the age of 19 to 64, it is recommended for these individuals who have any of these risk factors to receive one dose of PCV20 or they can choose to get one dose of PCV15. So it doesn't matter which PCV vaccine they get. These are very effective. It's important to prevent uh, invasive and non-invasive pneumococcal infection in these individuals. Now, uh, once if they do choose to get PCV15, it is recommended for them to get one dose of PPSV23. Um, and it is important to get it at least one year uh, apart. Now, this one year apart uh, becomes uh, essentially eight weeks for those higher risk. So if they have just comorbidity in the first group, they have to wait at least one year. 
uh, but in the second group and the third group because they are so high risk that you may consider to not wait for a uh, for a year to give the PPSV 23 you can shorten it to eight weeks um, and uh, give them PPSV 23 if they got PCV 15 in order to give them full coverage uh, given their high risk conditions now as before if for whatever reason they had happened to get the PPSV 23 first uh, then you just have to wait one year to give them either PCV15 or PCV20, whatever they choose. Uh, and, uh, you know, once you give this vaccination, they're done. So once they turn 65, if they have received this, there's really no need for them to get um, another, uh, another vaccine. Now, if they turn 65 and they had not received this vaccine, so it is recommended one dose of PCV. Uh, you know, either 15 or 20, just, just like before. Uh, or um, if they had, uh, you know, previously received uh, PCV uh, 13, uh, they still need to get a PPSV, um, uh, PPSV 23, or they can even get PCV 20 once uh, they turn uh, 65. And here's a summary of what I covered in a table format, which I let you pause this video and review.